As the emojis creatively suggest, this vulnerability affects BMW connected vehicles. Okay, let's get to it. The vulnerability is a stack buffer overflow in the navigation update component of the head unit. The affected component exists in user space and runs in an, an embedded system. Shout out to KinLab for their work on connected vehicle security research. Modern cars increasingly have a wide variety of attack surfaces, but local, example USB interfaces from within the car, and remote, example internet connectivities to the vendors. Modern cars usually have multiple computers, and it's important that they are connected such that a compromise in one component does not trivially translate to the compromise of safety critical vehicular systems. A typical adversarial objective is to gain access to those critical systems either by employing privilege escalation or lateral movement tactics. The following illustrates some components of connected BMW cars and their respective attack surfaces. Telematic communication box interacts with an external actor via the 3G GSM SMS protocols. The MBT head unit interacts with an external actor via USB Bluetooth technology. The central gateway interacts with external actors via the OBD2 interface. This particular vulnerability concerns the NBT head unit accessible via USB interface. The vulnerability affected the NBT head unit and was leveraged by KinLab for privilege escalation in a local exploit chain. Next, we discuss how it manifested. BMW cars support navigational map updates via files delivered over USB, presumably normally via BMW service centers. A custom binary formatted manage underscore upd.nzdf file is processed to decompress and parse other files related to navigation updates. Pay attention to the keywords decompress and parse because that, that's usually used to reference when attacker controlled impute data will be handled or processed by backend system. The vulnerable code, which we know to be cal compress file inf, declares a file name variable buffer of size 1024 bytes. And then eventually it performs a sprintf function call, copying value from the decompressed file into the fixed style buffer. At this point, your exploit is sent, should be tingling. Basically, this is a um, copy from attacker controlled impute data into a fixed size buffer on the stack. There is no validation on the size of the data being copied. Well, exploitation in this case turned out to be trivial because the updates were not digitally signed. And if you recall how sprintf behaves, it finds the null bytes. So you can create an arbitrary large file name by just having a null byte beyond 1024 characters. Apparently, there were no stack canaries and no, no SASLR, so the code was just compiled without any sort of protection, which made code execution to be a achievable via return-oriented programming. Unfortunately, uh, this was a proprietary code affected. There was no patch analysis by the researcher, and so we're not aware of what the fix was.